Ancient of days, King of kings and Lord of lords, our creator and sustainer, thank you, Daddy, for counting us among the recipients of your love, your compassion, your mercies, your providential benefits, and your benevolence. Our desire and prayer is to enjoy your glorious presence every day of this year, 247. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we go into your word, please silence every voice of the enemy. Powerfully arrest every wandering spirit. And focus our thoughts on you so that we will hear directly from you alone. This we pray in Jesus' name. You can say a loud amen now. Uh, even if they take everything, they won't take our amen. Last year, 2023, was a very difficult year for many people. But God carried us with his loving, everlasting arms and landed us safely in 2024. And to him be all honor, glory, dominion, power, and majesty in the name of Jesus. We have almost done one month. Today is 28 three days to go and if I feel the pulse of people around me correctly I know that so many people are saying that this year 2024 is not different from 2023 why some are even saying that this year 2024 may be worse than 2023 but my dear good people of God as I told them in the first service no be so God, they do something in this country. You may not see it, but he is doing something mighty. And he has given me his word in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 to speak to somebody. He says, forget year 2023. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Because now I am doing a new thing. Can't you perceive it? It's already there because I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams will flow in the wasteland. And what God is telling somebody this morning is that all those things that seem impossible, those things they said and told you to your face that you will never achieve, God will make them possible for you in this year in the name of Jesus Christ. It is in acknowledgement of God's power to reverse the irreversible, to write up somebody the world has written off and written down. God's sovereignty over every situation, every circumstance, every condition, every situation that made our beloved bishop, the right reverend, if I don't like, send us to Gabriel, look, baby, to prayerfully choose the team for this year, which is a personalized one. I don't know whether the team is for you, but for me, the team is my year of full restoration. You don't want to say it. Uh -huh. The lawyers, the judges, and my senior advocates, the church, we did. Uh, so make we loosen up a little. Praise the Lord. And we'll take our anchor test in Joel 2, 25 and 26. That's what we have chosen as our overall test for the year. It says, and I, God, will restore the years that the locusts, some versions say the savage and swarming locust had eaten. So, say the canker worm crawling deadly, the caterpillars, the fierce ones, the consuming ones, all the palmer ones, the invading ones, the chewing ones, different layers of desolation and destruction. He says, the enemy I send, my great army, which I sent. So whether in challenges, whether in good times or bad times, God knows what is happening to us. And God is saying to somebody that no matter the damage that these different levels of locusts have caused, 
that he is going to change something for somebody because you shall eat in plenty. He says that you will be satisfied. And because you are satisfied, you will praise the name of the Lord who has done wondrously to you. And he says, no more shall any one of us be associated with shame. And so it shall be in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. No limitations of 2023. No anxieties of 2023. No losses of 2023. No calamities of 2023. No fatalities of 2023. No disappointments of 2023. No pains of 2023. No failures of 2023. No sicknesses of 2023. No infirmities of 2023. No barrenness of any form of 2023. No afflictions of 2023 will raise its ugly head in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you may have lost, either by your own error or the errors of other people, God will restore to you in full this year in the name of Jesus Christ. And God does not only restore to status quo. I beg to borrow your words. He restores to a new and better condition than the previous one. He did it to Job because his later was better than the former. And so it shall be unto somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. And God has said it and so it shall be because God is a faithful God. He is a covenant keeping God. Who can overturn his counsel? Nobody. Who can declare a thing and it happens if God had not spoken? We worship a life changer. We worship a miracle worker. And so I have no iota of doubt in my mind that you and I will enjoy full restoration this year in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that so much has been shared with you on this general team in the past weeks. So my business today, my focus, will be on just one very important portal or what I call gateway for assessing this promised full restoration. So join me faithfully and sincerely as we explore the hidden mysteries in the theme for the day, which is tightening your way to full restoration. Can we say that? Tell somebody, tight to your way to full restoration. Then why not personalize it? And our test will be taken from that Old Testament reading Mommy read for us. I will take verse 10, Malachi 3.10. It says, bring all the ties into, the, into my storehouse that there may be food in my house. And when you do that, try me and see if I, God, will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. The subject of Titan has generated so much intense interest in Christian the world over. Some positions are laughable. Some positions are products of ignorance. Some very contemptuous. Some preposterous. Why some are in sync with the word of God? Who should always be our benchmark? But one thing I guarantee you this morning is that I will neither add nor add nor deduct or amend or squeeze anything out of the word of God or into the word of God other than what he has given us. Because I don't want to die in shame or end up in hellfire. I take seriously the warnings of God in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 and Revelation 22, 18 and 19. 
In Deuteronomy 4, 2, the word of God says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God. While in Revelation 22, 18 and 19, this one is more explicit. It says, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds so to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, not be waiting I want, from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. I am not here to fight for God. I'm not here to defend God. Who am I to fight or defend God? God can defend himself. God can fight for himself. God is not bad that couldn't stop Gideon from destroying his altar in Judges 6. Neither is our God, Baal, and Asherah that failed their worshippers on Mount Camel, according to 1 Kings 18, when they failed to answer by fire. Our own God answered by fire. My mission this morning is to reveal the truth of the word of God to you as it relates to Titan, based on the little insights and knowledge God has graciously given to me. And we'll start by asking ourselves, what is a tight or what is Titan? And simply put, tight is a kind of offering that has a fixed or predetermined amount, which is 10%, 10% of one's income or produce. When one pays his or her tithe, we say that such a person is a tither or is tithing. And um, in the first service, I told my father in the Lord that he would determine with the lawyers in the house and the judges whether those things are English words or not. But permit me to use them today. To tithe is to express gratitude to God for who he is and also to acknowledge the fact that God is the owner of everything. We are mercy words. Tithe is paid from what you have received. What you have earned from your labor. You cannot pay tithe from nothing or emptiness. And besides, God will only bless the work of your hands. So you must work diligently before you start thinking of paying your tithe. There are principles laid down by God which you cannot override. Principle of planting and what? Reaping. Sowing and reaping. If you reap when you've not sown, then you're a thief. True or false? I don't know. Daddy, you can defend me, Sha. You know. But that's the truth. Titan does not overrule that principle. Beloved in Christ, as I did mention earlier, we have so many issues, so many controversies as to who should pay tithe, how should tithe be paid, to whom should tithe be, what should the tithe be used for. And I want to tell you sincerely that these controversies arose because some church leaders have elevated materialism above spirituality. Many have not been genuinely accountable to both God and man in character and conduct in the administration of God's tithe. Where children of titers cannot be admitted to the schools built with the ties of their parents is not just an aberration, it's an infraction to the commands of God. It is these unholy behaviors, 
of some men and women of God that have given room to many unnecessary arguments, misgivings, misconceptions, and malicious attack on the harmless, efficacious principle of Titan. However, some antagonists serve us have big truth. And they play on the sentiments and vulnerability of many of us. So before I proceed, I would like to clear some cobwebs, disperse the hovering cloud of doubt and unbelief over the authenticity and biblical orthodoxy of Titan. And I want to make it very clear. I'm not here to teach anybody. Who will I teach? Is it daddy or mommy? Who? You people know the truth now. I'm only here to remind us of the truth we know. And to farm, to flame that seed that has been sown in our lives. Let us start by some of those arguments. One, some people say that Titan is an Old Testament theology and that is no longer applicable in this time of dispensation of what? Grace. And to these protagonists, Christ has fulfilled the law and therefore there is no need to tithe. I want to take you to Matthew 5, 17 to 20. I will only read 17. It says, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to do what? Fulfill them. So Christ's fulfillment of the law redeemed us and released us from the power of sin and made grace, as my brother prayed, available to enable us to fulfill the law, which ordinarily would have been impossible. Law of Titan is therefore still valid today. It is God's word which remains the same forever and ever. The second argument, my lords, Titan was not mentioned in the New Testament. Some people will say, and this is a fat lie. There may not be an open expression, an open command in the Bible like the sacraments in the New Testament. But I want to let us know that in the Old Testament, there were no sacraments. So, Jesus needed to institutionalize them in the New Testament. But in doing those things, reference are often made to the OT. The OT is in the New Testament. The New Testament is hidden in the Old Testament. None is superior to the other. Therefore, in Luke chapter 11 verse 42, which is also replicated in Matthew 23, 23. Jesus says something that is very important. Addressing the Pharisees, who must have told him there is no need for tithing, he told them, because you give God a tenth of your mint, because you pay tithe, you are real and other kinds of guiding helps. But woe to you, because you neglect what? Justice and love. In some versions, love is charity. Love is act of kindness. Jesus said, you should have practiced the letter. You should have practiced justice and charity without leaving the former, which is what? Which is what? Say it now. Which is what? You are scared. Maybe you are in the group of those that say that Titan is not New Testament teaching. Jesus said, you should continue tithing, but don't just stop there. Make sure that you do what? You show mercy and practice what? Praise the Lord. 
So Christ commanded us to pay tithe. And what is 10%? Another area of contention. Considering that Palestinians had an agrarian society, it's very easy to determine what 10% is. When you harvest your yam, you can count the tubers. If you harvest them, you give how many as tight? 20 tubers? That's it. Today we have so many issues. Should it be net profit? Should it be revenue? Should it be on capital? Somebody even suggested we should pay on loan. And some people are paying on school fees given to their children. My dear good people of God, if the harvest is a good example of how tithe should be determined, that means the produce of the farm. I make bold to tell you that tithe should therefore be from profit and not from revenue or capital. Tithe should be from your earnings, what you earn with your hands, not from what you stole. Tithe should not be on school fees. Please, my children, I hope you are listening. Don't allow those fly-by-night pastors to take your school fees and they will send you home. Tithe can also be in kind or cash. In the Old Testament time, it was basically in kind. But there was a place in Deuteronomy 1425 uh, when they were traveling because they can't carry load. They were asked to exchange their produce to silver. And when they get to their destination, they will convert it back to the item. Today, we have a different economy. The ecosystem has changed. And I believe it is more convenient for you and I to pay in cash. I imagine how it will look like for somebody that is operating a poultry farm to bring baskets of chicken into this place or cows and goats. I don't think it will make any sense. Praise the Lord. Should I continue? Because my time is almost gone. But I will continue. Because after today, you may not like my face again. Another issue. Some people are saying that because the Aaronic or Levitical order, order of priesthood, has been cancelled. Because today, according to 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, we regale in the priesthood of all believers. They say that titan is no longer necessary. Yes. Why did they say that? When they were dividing the land, they were apportioning things. They didn't give the Levites anything because they told them that your sufficiency is in the Lord. But it is these Levites that look after the temple. So where would they get money to take care of the temple? How will they feed or do you think God will continue to rain manna from heaven? It will never happen again. And so God gave order. In that Deuteronomy 26, 12 and 13. It says, when you have finished setting aside your tithe, you shall give them to the Levites, to the priests. The strangers, you know strangers were not considered when they were sharing the land. It was to the 11 other tribes. Then to the poor, the widow, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Beloved in Christ, tithe is God's property. Priests, general overseers, pastors are just administrators and partial beneficiaries. The problem we have today is that some self-made pastors and general overseers have converted the entire tithe to their private estate. This is wrong. And that is why many people are discouraged from paying their tithes. But today, I must appeal to you because in the Anglican church and in this parish and the vicar you have 
today, you are in safe hands. So please do the right thing. Pay your tithe. Let God judge whoever that is abusing his tithe. Did I hear amen from somebody? Another issue. When should tithe be paid? How? Very simple. Tithe is a kind of offering. So just as you can give, give to the person you love anytime, any day. Give offering to God who created you anytime, any day, anywhere. Sometimes the cycle of your business may impact that. That is fine. It could be monthly, quarterly, biannually, or annually. But whatever it is, please be faithful to it. Did I hear men from somebody? I want to tell us that I agree with those antagonists that also say that tight is not the way to salvation. They are very correct. After all, the Bible in Acts 4, 12 says that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which any shall be saved. But the truth is this. You need, according to Philippians 2, 12, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. How will I know that you are saved? How will you know that I'm saved if I'm not behaving differently from other people? Everything we do today in the service of the Lord is not what gave us salvation. What gave us salvation was the blood of Jesus. So, in appreciation of what God has done, we bring our tithes and offerings into his house. So we pay tithe as a gratitude for what Christ has done, not because we are compelled to do so. We pay tithe so that the ministry of Jesus Christ in this parish will flourish, so that people will not be in lack, so that your priests will be taken care of. I told them in the morning, there is a saying in my place, if a native doctor is hungry, the only thing where you go to see, na death, death, death. And if I raise my hand to bless you, and I'm hungry, na hunger you go to receive. Do you understand? So you have to make sure that your pastors, your priests are blessed. How much are they paid? How much? How much? I have some wordings that will say, ah, this one we are giving to the word. I will be looking at them. I pray they will become priests. Because I know some of them that became priests, they wanted to run away. Non-stipendiary priests, we receive 10,000 a month. Then this full time, you know, rich even, make I no talk, because my bishop may be on the line. But what am I telling us? They live on what you give them. And one way to ensure that they are taken care of is through these tithes. One way the poor will be taken care of is through this tithe. One way the church will be taken care of is through these tithes. Beloved in Christ, Obedience is very key to our relationship with God and for us to enjoy this full restoration. And Titan is one way of exhibiting a clinical obedience. When God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, God was not looking for blood to drink. They wanted to know whether Abraham will obey. Today we sing Abraham blessings are mine. How many of us will do what Abraham did? When you pay your tithe, you are obeying God. And God will bless you. Tithing attracts God's blessings. It is not a bribe to God to bless you. It's appreciation shown to God for his blessings. When Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek, every promise that God made to him began to drop. And I pray for somebody today 
what the enemy has been holding from you, God will release it for you this year in the name of Jesus. My dear good people of God, when you pay your tithe, nothing will be tight for you. Can you tell somebody that? When you pay your tithe, say it again. Honestly, my dear good people of God, you pay your tithe to tell God that you know the way to heaven. It takes a regenerated spirit, a born again child of God, to pay his or her tithe. And I want to ask us a question Is 10% too big? To give to the owner of everything. The owner of the brain you used to imagine why should I pay 10%? If you decide to take away the brain, what happens? Let me share a very brief story with you, then I will close. In my former world, I was working in a company and we were making losses. And we were paying no taxes, zero tax. We didn't even qualify for minimum tax. And we were praying. We were working hard. Mommy Gochupu knows what they do to people when they go for strategy session. The target, the budget. And suddenly things changed. We made one million naira. Tax rate. Is thirty percent so very easy. We paid three hundred thousand. We are happy. We kept working hard and praying, and suddenly we hit one billion, two billion. Ha! We went for the next meeting. CFO, how do we reduce effective tax rate? That's what some of us do with our tithes. What has changed? Nothing. It's just that now you are beginning to look at the size of the tithe. When it was 10 naira, it was okay. 1,000, it was okay. Now, 1 billion. Hey! How can I do that? Beloved in Christ, tithe is in fact the minimum thanksgiving or offering that you should give to God. When you pay your tithe, you are acknowledging the sovereignty of God over your life. You are declaring that in God you have your sufficiency. Titan is indeed an act of faith. And you know that God rewards faith. Dearly beloved, good people of Church of Resurrection 1004, show me a great church and I will show you a church that pays and receives tithes. Show me a tithing congregation and I will show you a prosperous people. One who pays his or her tithe puts God on the spot to fulfill his promise. Because in Malachi 3.10b, he says, test me in this by paying your tithe and you will see that I, God, I will throw up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that your barn cannot take it. And I want to tell you, if things are tight for you, start paying your tight. If you are being controlled by your possessions, if you have materialistic tendencies, start paying your tight. Is there pride in your life Start paying your tithe. Are you overwhelmed by the love for money? Start paying your tithe. And things will change for you. And tithing to me, and I want you to take it away today, is the easiest way to say thank you God for what you have been to us. When you tithe, you promote the work of God. And above all, you place yourself in a poor position to assess his blessings, his restorations that no devourer can touch. 
So my dear good people, I put it to you that Titan is biblical, is true, and if you want to enjoy the promises of full restoration, begin to pay your tithe today. And God will restore whatever you have lost in the name of Jesus Christ. Pay your tithe into full restoration this year. Happy New Year once again. And it will continue to be well with you. God bless you.